Hey, Sesame Says, I've tried to reach out to you a few times. Dot, 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 space, space. Where should we go from here? That's gotten me a response every time. Really? Every single time. And then I had him... What do you think it is? What, what is it about that that triggers that response? I think response? it's like, it's leaning out a little bit. It's like, hey man, like where do you want to go from here? Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it puts it back on them being like, hey, I've, I've made the effort here. Yeah. Welcome back to another episode of Coffee is for Closers. It's a little bit unusual today because um, you're just so busy. There's I got, no a, new, I got a new house and there's trades people coming in and out. Yep. So there's no time to go to the office. So we're here. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, cameras can move. I can. Um, reasons so yeah. anyway, you pay extra for that. <laughs> you know. Roll the intro. <laughs> Ex-Special Forces sniper turned entrepreneur. I've scaled numerous businesses to eight figures. My name is Matt Ryder. This is my podcast. And I'm telling you to put that coffee down. down. So today we're talking about rejection. That's one of the things that I think gets glossed over, especially like on the podcast, is that a lot of salespeople um, don't deal well with the rejection that they will face many, many times. Yeah. Now I know for you, you're like, just get over it. <laughs> <laughs> that, and that's not helpful advice. Yeah. Because I think for some people that is a, a something that they'll really struggle with in their career. Yeah. Um, so I thought it would be fun initially for you to tell us some of the mo more heinous rejections that you've gotten, like some yeah. of the more outrageous things people have said to you. Um, like, uh, it's, I don't remember a lot of them because I don't care when it happens. It doesn't, I think it's kind of, oh, that's funny. It's a good anecdote, mm -hmm. right? So I think a lot of them happen during fitness. Some of the ones that like stuck with me in fitness is when I had like, I remember there was a woman um, and she was in New Zealand and she was, you know, I think she was like 170 kilos, something like that, really, really big. Um, she smoked two packs a day, and in Australia, cigarettes, you know, New Zealand cigarettes, like 40 bucks a pack. Mm -hmm. She had McDonald's four to five times a day. So we worked out, like, she was spending roughly, I don't know, she was spending like 200 bucks a day on terrible food that was killing her, and booze on top of those kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she was a grandmother. She was like a 55-year-old grandmother. Uh, and, and so, and I was like, so you're spending this and like, would you be open to reducing some of that to put into your fitness? And she was like, no. And like, just flat out, like, no, 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 I'm not spending money on this. I was like, but you're dying. She's like, yeah. And you really need to lose the weight because you know that you'll die young and you're not going to see your grandparent, grandkids grow up. Yeah, yeah, no, all that's, yeah, 100%. Like, you know, I need to fix it. I was like, but will you stop? Like, let's, would you remove one pack of cigarettes a day? No, 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 I'm not doing that. And it was just like the, the, the craziness that blew my mind. I think those are the ones that stuck with me more when it was like, yes, I want to do it. It wasn't like the fuck you and then hang up. It's uh -huh. just like, ah, that's stupid. That's silly. Mm -hmm. It was more like the ones where the people so desperately needed it, but there was something. And I don't think like, you know, I'm not Tony Robbins. I can't heal someone in an hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so those, those are the weird ones. They're just always like, what is... What is happening? Where yeah, where you this, can't rationalize it. It's just, but it's so, like, the speech and the action are so contrary mm. that it's, it's hard to kind of wrap your head around. Mm -hmm. And, I, like, I remember a lot of that conversation, you know? Do you think it's more, like, damaging? Do you think it's, like, people feel it more when it's, as soon as they realize it's a sales call and hang up? Versus people that let you go all the way through the process and they're like, no, nah, I'm not interested. Like, which Not interested is super more? rare really? because that's confrontational. Okay. So people, like I've had people give me wrong credit card numbers. I've had people hang up in the middle of giving me a credit card. <laughs> um, I've had people like, yeah, you know, my, yeah, my, my 100% and do my wallet's in my car. I'm like, yeah, man, that's cool. I don't mind. Like, I can't wait. And then like have them literally... <laughs> like pretend <laughs> to go down to their car and then... Hang up. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, like, uh, like, like knowingly, like it's like out of a skit. Yeah. And so that stuff really, because it made me very, it makes me happy when that happens because I can picture the person doing it. And yeah. it's like, if you just can't tell someone, oh man, listen, listen, I'm sure it would work, but I'm just not into it at the moment. Yeah. It's such an easy thing to say. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh yeah, fair enough. Like yeah. there's not much to get to come back to that. Uh, but those are the ones that make me laugh. One of the funniest ones I ever saw was when I was reviewing a call and it was a fitness sale, like a high ticket fitness. And the guy did all the right things. And the, he had this guy in a box, right? 
And he, so he overcome a few objections. The guy's like, you know what? I think you're right. I need to do it. Let me just go get my card. And so the guy leaves the Zoom, and then all you see is an arm come back <laughs> over and just <laughs> exit. <laughs> exit. And it, like, I was killing myself. I was killing myself laughing. It was absolutely amazing. Yeah. Um, would your advice be then that if you really struggle with rejection, maybe sales isn't the career for you? Do, do you think that is? Or, I or think it, life is for you. I think you probably hear more no's than yeses in general in life. Yeah. You, you know? I think, I, think, I think you're looking at it the wrong way. You know, it's not, it's not rejection because it's, it's not you. Yeah. They're not buying you. Yeah. Like, sometimes they are. Um, yeah, so that's what I wanted to separate later on was that at, as a salesperson, if you're an industry salesperson, you're a career salesperson, yeah. you're not selling yourself. No. You're selling some service, some product for someone else. Yeah. So it, with that in mind, uh, like you know, when you get multiple rejections, do you think that one of the issues sort of associated with that is less personal, but more like undermines your faith in the product that you're selling? Uh, I don't know. I, I would. I think a lot of people, they, well, not many people would shift that towards the product. People shift it towards themselves in okay. almost every scenario. You know, like, what could I have done better? It, it comes down to people not having an understanding of where they're at in their development cycle. Like, if you're a, a 10% guy, like, you're new to sales, or the offer is just that's how it's structured. Like, it's a flood the gates type offer. Like, just come one, come all, and we'll sort you out in the sales process. Mm -hmm. um, you have to be able to like remove yourself a little bit. Like if I'm shooting and it's a crazy windy day, I'll give myself a little bit of a break. Mm -hmm. You know, like yeah. yeah, I need to be able to navigate that. But if it's just like ungodly, it's like yeah. wow, this is yeah, you know, things are doing these. So I think like people don't know their data. So if they're thinking that they're like, uh, you know, I feel like I close around fifty percent. Mm -hmm but you're a 10, you're just going to be perpetually upset and angry all the time because yeah. you feel like you're underperforming, where in reality, you're performing to the appropriate level of your current skill set. Yeah. And so it's about those, like, unhappy, if you, as soon as you understand that, then you can set, like, oh, what's, what have I done for the last three months? Yeah. What's my average? It's like, oh, I closed at 15%. Sweet. So if I have 10 calls and two say yes, fucking good day. Yeah. Because I performed above. Like, that's why I learned someone when I was doing golf lessons, right? This is a while ago when I had time to play golf. Um, uh, right? Imagine having that time. Oh, man. man. Yeah, exactly. You know, when I was a Boom. PT, I'd play golf three times a week. Madness. I, I, because I didn't start working until about 10. Yeah. So I would go and I would, start, I would play golf at, from 9, from, sorry, from 8 to 9.30. Yeah. And then I would take the ferry into work. Yeah, right. And I would, yeah, fucking great. Living um, the dream. Yeah. yeah, and then I had children. And, it was the end of that. Yeah, you know. <laughs> um, but um, he, he said, um, your, your, your handicap is a reflection of you on a good day. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, that's, that's a different way of looking at it. I thought that's what you should shoot all the time. Mm. But it's a reflection of you on a good day. So you might have a great day, and you might have a bad day, and you'll have a good day. So it's like you sh you'll probably most of the time shoot a little bit worse than your handicap, mm -hmm. you, know, you know? So yeah. um, that's, that, that helped me out a lot when I was looking at sales. I was like, well, if my close rate's 30, that's a reflection of me on a good day. So like if I hit 40, I'm like ecstatic. But if I hit 25, I'm like, well, it's not far off, mm. you know? And I think most, most young sales reps, like even our teams, like I had a, not a guy, I, I did have a guy the other day. I just said, you guys want to make serious money, and I, I don't know that, but I was like, raise your hand if you track this, and one guy. Raise your hand if you track this, same guy. Track this, same guy. Track this, same guy. And I did like 10 metrics, which I told them all to track about 100 times. Mm -hmm. I've even given them the spreadsheet, mm -hmm. right? And I was like, it was Brian that put his hand up. I go, Brian, how many sales did you make last week? He said, 18. I was like, fantastic. So as we can see, <laughs> right? Yeah. Brian is doing the right things. Brian is getting the results because he has the data to kind of figure it out. Yeah, okay. And the guys that I can see that do really well, like there's a few guys that do really well, and all those dudes are constantly reworking small parts of it. Like on the weekend, I got one from one of our guys, Josh. He's like, hey, man, uh, the partner reframes that we went over, they're doing this, this, and this. I tried them, but I want to create this small tweak. And he wrote it out in like three different ways. Mm -hmm. And he was like, which one do you think is best? And I was like, this one. And he like took that one and then wrote that out in three different ways with like different inflections and then recorded it and sent it to me. He's like, which one? And I was like, this one. And he's like, perfect. 
Yeah. It's like, that's, that's what it takes yeah, to yeah. be really good. Yeah. I think that is what gets overlooked in sort of all industries, man, is that um, like the secret sauce is hard work and, and- It's unfortunate, but true. Yeah. And foundations as well. Mm. Like it's one of the things that I noticed, like, it, you know, in, I thought it was really a, a military thing. And then when I was training dogs, I was like, oh, it's a dog trainer, but it's everything. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, especially when you're training a dog, but in, in anything, it's not just in dog training, in, in anything is that like, when you make a step too far and you're, it's, it's incorrect, you have to have a, a somewhere to go back to, to mm. be correct. And if you make a step that's like way too, too far out and you're like, oh, I'm lost in the woods and I, I yeah. have nothing to fall back to. And I think that it relates exactly to the, like sales process and understanding the data in the way that you explained in that when you make a mistake or you not even make a mistake, you don't get a sale. You need to look and go, oh, that's normal. That's yeah. like for where I'm at, for this offer, for the number of sales that I make, for all of those things line up and go, that was actually more likely to happen than not. Yeah. And that's that's normal. And that means that I'm closer to the, the next one that will It's also will a freeing out. concept. Because once you like, once you do that, it, then the outcome is not did I get the sale? The outcome is, well, did I follow my process tightly enough to where I had the best chance? Mm-hmm. Like you can, you can, like no one can fix every dog, but as long as you do the steps, you can yeah. go like, well, my, 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 like I threw the kitchen sink at it. Maybe the thing is fucking, I don't know, got a mental illness. Yeah. I'm out of ideas. Yeah. There's yeah. a bird. So in our new house, right? There's a bird that I think has a mental illness. What's it do? Um, so it lands on our balcony and on my, on our master bed, ba- ba- um, like master bedroom shits all over the uh, balustrade <laughs> and then attacks the window. Yeah, right. But like, and then smears shit all over the window because it's got, <laughs> so like it just goes bam, bam, like that. And like all day. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's just got a mental illness. Like, well, you know, there's degrees of that, right? So like in all animals, like it, it's super obvious in people and we can diagnose it and there's all these different subcategories and blah, 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 blah. But for sure in animals, there's the same. Right? Yeah. And, and there's like, there's a spectrum of understanding, but we can't necessarily tap into that. Yeah. So it's quite possible. It, yeah. It is... I, had, I got anti-bird strips coming from Amazon oh, really? and like a big ass fake crow. What could be weird though is if he's into that. I know. <laughs> no, no, no. Yes. Like, I hate myself. There's various degrees of mental illness. Yeah. Right? Then um, I got to buy a BB gun. Yeah. Well, yeah. That'll be the end of <laughs> it's that. what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so rejection. There's got to be a funny one where someone like fucked you over, like where if you were a more feeling person, you would have been like, oh. Okay. Well, there's a couple of those. The one that told me the biggest lesson though was when the guy, uh, I think I might have told this story before, but I kind of went after him for like not being there at the time. And then from there, he looped around me to go to the business owner so that, you know, I didn't get the commission. That was a big like lesson learning point. I think um, getting ghosted is by far the most frustrating. Mm-hmm. Especially when the people are like, yeah, 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 I'm in. Um, good to go. Like, we're trying to sign up a few new accounts that are like larger accounts at the moment. And like, we've had to chase them. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, you can't chase because then like it sort of, they, they run faster away. Mm-hmm. So I've been having Jeremy write my emails and texts to them. Okay. And it fucking works. Yeah. It's insane. Like, there's a couple of really simple ones, like that one that, you know, from his TikTok. Explain it, yeah. Yeah. So it's like, uh, still, it's, still his content. Yes, yes, yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it's, um, Hey, such and such, I've tried to reach out to you a few times, dot, 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 space, space, where should we go from here? That's gotten me a response every time. Really? Every single time. And then I had him... What do you think it is? What, what is it about that that triggers that response? I think response? it's like, it's leaning out a little bit. It's like, hey man, like, where do you want to go from here? Mm-hmm. Um, and, it, and it puts it back on them being like, hey, I've, I've made the effort here. Yeah. Like this is getting, like, you, you, you need to tell me now, like where we're going from here. So from a status standpoint, you're... you're yeah, you're, you're not talking down to them, but you're also not sort of like begging them either, right? So it probably keeps you on the same yeah. play as them. Jeremy's very big on status. Yeah. Like being in the same, I was going to, it's a new phone, it wasn't up there, but he sent me another one because then when I sent that message, that person answered immediately yeah. and said, yep, yeah, such and such and such, will you have an answer at the end of the week? I didn't get an answer at the end of the week. Okay. So then on Saturday, I messaged Jeremy and I was like a screenshot and I was like, what, what do I do now? Because like, my immediate go-to response is like, and I was like, hang on a second, let me just slow this down and NEPQ this a little bit. And then Jeremy sent me, Jeremy sent me, oh, do a calendar commitment question, which is like, hey, um, 
that's totally cool. It might be a bit hard to catch me randomly with my schedule. Uh, what I can do for you is I can go ahead and book a time to chat next week, and that way, you know, you don't like you don't have to chase me. Mm -hmm. um, and that worked. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it's it's really funny. Like just he's been through so many scenarios that yeah. he just knows the thing to say to give yourself the best chance of getting the outcome that you want, whether it's you know get them to get back to you or get them to book an appointment or whatever. Yeah. Do you so. think that that has a lot to do with just sort of minimizing the resistance in like? You, you've basically done all the work for the person in that instance. Yeah. Because I think, like, I regularly don't get back to people. I'm a piece of shit in that regard. Like, I'm a mess. I'm all over the place. Right now, I'm trying to book my schedule for next year. And I stupidly, instead of contacting the people who I'd worked with in the past, I just thought, for some reason, I got in my head, I was like, it would be a bit presumptuous of me to assume they want to host me again, which they almost all do. And I put it out publicly and said, like, hey, ready to travel again next year? Like, who wants to? And had like 40 inquiries in 24 hours. I had to turn off, I had to stop. Like I was like, fuck, I can't take anymore. And now I've done nothing because it's too <laughs> Like it's, it's too scary for me. Yeah, right. And the only ones I've actually booked are people who shot me and were like, how about these dates? I was like, yes, like <laughs> you've done the work. So I think the same probably happens in regards yeah. to a lot of those things. If people have got like six different projects going on and you are regularly emailing, they're probably like, well, this guy's like, I don't need to put the work in on that area because he is yeah when i get the time i'll come back to it exactly and, and, yeah people are just busy like that's the thing that's one of the things about rejection is people are just busy yeah um a lot of the time the default of the salesperson or anyone really is to go like this person's ghosting me Rah. it's like well no man like i've ghosted plenty of people and the thing that always goes through my head is like if someone calls me and i know it's a 20 minute conversation and i don't have 20 minutes i reject the call yeah because I go, I will call that person back. Same. I have every intention of doing it. I'm just really busy and I can't have that conversation right now. Yeah. And then I just forget to call them back. Yeah. It's just the way it is. So when you're calling leads, like that's my assumption. Mm -hmm. So like when leads don't pick up 10 times, it's fine. Like not a big deal. Just keep calling them. How can you say they're not interested? They don't know it's you that's calling. Mm. You know, and like, if you've called them and messaged them and emailed them, it's like, well, they only, you know, they're reading all those at different times. And even if they are super interested, it doesn't mean they're going to immediately get back to you because people are just busy. Yeah. And also, like, people don't answer unknown phone numbers. Yeah. Like, they let it go to voicemail and they don't check their voicemails. And it's like, then you got to call them, text them, email. You got to give people opportunity to kind of to be filtered through. Yeah. That, that's the way. I, that's why I didn't mind calling leads 50 times. Yeah. Like, if they want me to stop calling them, they can just text me to stop calling them. Yeah, like, that's or fine. answer and say, stop, stop it. Yeah, stop calling me. It's like, all right, cool, man, no drama. But just I before think... I do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just let me objection handle yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But I think that that is something, like, worth exploring because everybody has rejected somebody else in one way, shape, or form. Yeah. And it's not always, it, it very often is not personal. And I think in, in regards to getting back to people, as you say, like most people or a lot of people don't work with their phone on them, right? Yeah. Um, and if it's you're... It's shocking that anyone buys. Yeah. I mean, this I is mean, the thing. How do you shocked. get through to anybody? Yeah. So like if I, if I spend more than... You know, like if I do a live stream or something like that and it's two hours where I can't check anything, that, I, that is an overwhelming amount of messages and sort of information that I get back. If that's in the work day, right? Like two hours without engaging with anything, yeah. just what I'm doing. And then I'm straight onto something else. I've got to answer questions, whatever. In that five minutes that I have, I'm going to pick the low hanging fruit, right? The easy yeah. things to get back to. Yeah. And as you say, if it's like a 20 minute question, if it's a 20 minute response, you may never get me back because I'm likely never have that 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. And so identifying like everybody has probably been in that position. Everybody has probably yeah. been that busy. It's that per prospect could be doing, just doing the same thing. And if like they don't buy or they say, yeah, man, this sounds really good. Let's go ahead and book a follow up in two weeks. And then they, they don't turn up. Man, like it's not personal. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, it's just there's no need to get angry at it. The fact that anyone buys a 30K program over the phone after a 45 minute phone call is a fucking outrageous to begin with. Mm -hmm. So I think like as soon as you realize the pure audacity of the job that you're in, you know, because a lot of us like, there are a lot of people who listen to this that do sell insurance and like, fair enough. Like that's a phenomenal thing to buy. 
But like if you're selling like coaching and consulting programs, like you're selling access to information of which it's up to them to apply. Mm-hmm. You know, and you're selling it for the price of a car. Mm-hmm. Like a decent car mm-hmm. that they could then use to go to a real job. <laughs> <laughs> right? So not, not that I'm shitting on coaching, because I think coaching is, is, is worthwhile in, in, in sort of in a pursuit to learn more and get better at things, but it's, it's just a crazy thing that, mm-hmm. we, that you do. So um, the more you realize that, uh, like my mentality was and still is, uh, treat everyone like you would your mom. Mm-hmm. You know, if they're ghosting you, hey, is everything okay? Like, like have you fallen off the face of the cliff? Uh, send some funny memes. Just do things in like a lighthearted manner and don't get angry about it. Because the moment you get angry about it, they will reply. Mm-hmm. And they will smash you for it. And that's how you get in trouble. Talk to me a bit about memes. Because like, that's one of the things that uh, I hadn't really experienced until I saw it, you guys doing it. Yeah. Um, and the success that you've had with that. It's a pattern interrupt. So what you're looking when you're looking to follow up or try and get somebody back in to your fold is you need to give them a reason to reply. So NEPQ has some great ways of doing that like we just discussed, but also like memes, you can, you can say something quite rough, in, but it's sarcastic and funny, and there's more context with the imagery. So like one of the ones that I used to always send if somebody was ghosting me was like, you know that picture of like the skeleton on the park bench? Mm-hmm. And it was like just waiting for your reply. Mm-hmm. It's funny, mm-hmm. right? So it's like, oh, you know, you're not taking it too seriously. And then people go, ah, you got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, man. Just been. And the answer is, sorry, man. Just been super busy. Can we connect next week? And I go, sweet, what time? Yeah. Immediately. And then they go, this time. And go, sweet, man. I'll speak to you then. Yeah. Um, like that's 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 how you get back to them. So like you're you're just giving them a lighthearted push. Mm-hmm. And uh, because it's you know people, especially like under the age of say fifty, they accept memes as like a form of communication. Yeah. Uh, and if you can do them really well. Like, there's one where it's like a dolphin, and it's like, are you ignoring me on porpoise? Mm-hmm. Okay. You know? <laughs> See? That's what you're looking for. <laughs> yeah. That's a good guy. It's, it's a true, good though, guy. right? Because, like, I've like, got someone chasing me on Instagram at the moment. It's quite interesting to me. Like, normally I would have just blocked them um, uh, or just paid no attention to it whatsoever. Uh, it's a coach of some kind. I haven't quite figured that out yet. Um, they but they Yeah, they want money out of me. But, like, I put up a post, and then the... I got a DM on Instagram saying, um, you know, in reference to the post. So, like, I was like, oh, you did some, like, you actually made it a little bit bit personal. And, like, the post I put was just a a reel of a dog biting someone, and I mentioned the dog's name. And they even said, like, oh, that dog, dog's name's Lupo. Like, that Lupo looks amazing. And then into the, the, like, pitch, and I was like, oh, you'd personalize a little bit. The VA did a good job. But they followed me up three times, um, probably, like, every week. My next job will be to start noticing... Um, like if it's on a schedule, like if it's like at what interval are they following me up? Yeah. yeah. But the follow up is the same. It's just like, um, Hey, just wondering if you had time for what we said above. So like each follow up message has just been, I think I've got three has been like a one liner. Learning the status frame though. Yeah. Right. And so like normally I would pay no attention to this. Like 12 months ago, I wouldn't even, I'd be like, whatever. I'm not interested in it. Like they yeah. say that they're, they're, they're interesting in helping coaches of dog trainers. And it's like, there's me and like three other people on the planet that call themselves that, right? So <laughs> I highly doubt that's your yeah. niche. Oh, you know Gary too? <laughs> right. Because like, I was one of the first people to coin saying that I'm a coach to dog trainers, right? Yeah, like yeah. because, or, or to dog sport competitors, because it's a weird thing to be. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, that, and so more people do it now because they're like, oh, that's what, they've realized that's what they are. Yeah, yeah. Um, but so like, there's no one who's training them. Like that's a super weird niche, but, uh, I'm super interested in how they follow up. It's been terrible. It, but if they hit me with a meme, I will reply. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. So if you're out there, if you're watching. Yeah. 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 It's, um, the, the best at it is, uh, Drewby Wilson who works for a guy called Ryan Stuman. So he's Ryan Stuman's chief of sales or mm-hmm. head of sales, whatever his title is, but he has a course called sales memes I think no uh, closer memes and it's like a hundred bucks lifetime access yeah right. greatest course I've ever done and there's all the memes that are in there tons of them yeah and you can just and then it's a fa- it's a well it's a Facebook group it's a portal and a Facebook group right and the portal is just different memes right um, and then the Facebook group is people posting hilarious memes it's the best like hilarious sales memes and so like I think he was $97 I think he signed up a few hundred people to it like he, he made a little bit of cash out of it good so good on him 
Um, I, I coached him in sales. Yeah, right. Um, yeah, he's a really good guy. But uh, Closer Memes, if you got there, go buy the Closer Memes course. It's pretty funny. Closer um, Memes. But yeah, so that's kind of like, and he, he, he sort of really started pushing it. And he's like a master of self-lead gen. Mm-hmm. So he, he runs all the sales for Ryan Stuman, and they do their big you know, sales training. They sort of used to be in sales training, but now they're, because Ryan Stuman's like the hardcore closer, but now they're in more like business entrepreneurship and networking. So they have a program called Apex, which is like a big networking, marketing kind of business coaching thing. And they have a ton of people in it, like yeah, hundreds right. of people. Like it's a big, it's a big thing. Um, Ryan Stuman's got, you know, like five supercars. Yeah, right. Uh, yeah. Spent, that all? Spent five years in prison, you know what I mean? Sort of, he's got a cool story. Yeah, right. Um, but yeah, so he, he was sort of the, the guy that I, that I learned off in terms of that, just like some of the nuances of it, so that was yeah, really yeah. cool. But yeah, so I think, you know, going back to the rejection piece, you just don't take it too seriously. Yeah. You know? So what, it, like, what have you experienced in the industry of people who are the product? So like I think as a salesperson, it's like... Oh. I've seen some horrendous... Like, the thing is, man, like, if nobody owes you shit. Yeah. Like, I so I won't name his, but he's an Australian coach, right? He's an Australian biz op coach. So what he does is he teaches people how to be coaches. Okay. And get to their first 10 grand a month. So these are people who are 9 to 5, think they have something to offer. Anything biz op is low-ish on the money scale, mm-hmm. right? Um, because, like, if you're in a really good 9 to 5, you probably wouldn't you could just transition to being a coach. Like, mm-hmm. if you're really good at it, like, if you're a fucking high-flying CEO, mm-hmm. you could probably just find five coaching clients and have a business, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? You wouldn't need to hire someone. So, anyone in that space, you're, you're looking at... It's a hard, be dubious. Yeah, it's a harder run. Yeah. But he used to run... Uh, this will make it super obvious for everyone, who knows? But he used to run, like, he still does, I think, like, a 10-day free challenge where basically you're guaranteed to get your first coaching client, something like that. And then the the deal is you use that money from the free challenge to pay for the course, pay for the first thing. And there was like a huge Facebook rant about a guy who got a coaching client and then didn't want to sign up. Right. And it was a rant. Like I'm talking named him, shamed him, video, giant post. And I saw all these fucking mouth breathers on there going, yeah, fuck that guy. I was like, what do you mean fuck that guy? I was like, first of all, how dare you? Like, yeah, yeah. how dare you? Yeah. Like, that, uh, it actually really, really put me off. I was like, oh, Because at the time, we were sort of looking at potentially working with him, and I was like, ugh. Yeah, right. Like, if that's what you do to people who just don't sign up, fuck me, I couldn't imagine if, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If a business relationship went bad, that would be horrendous. But it's just like, who cares, man? Mm. Like, who gives a shit? Like, they got some value from your service, didn't see enough value to where they wanted to move forward. Oh, well. Yeah. Like, do you, you know how many people say no to us? Like, at seventh level, we have a 37% close rate, which I think is pretty fucking good, mm-hmm. right? We sign up 300 people a month. You do the fucking math. Yeah, that's a lot of people. That's a lot of no's, yeah. you know? Um, and would they all benefit? Yes. Should they all do it? I fucking hope so. Yeah. But, like, are they all going to say yes there and then? Is it an appropriate time for them in their lives and where they're at? And would they all be good clients? No. So who cares, man? Yeah. Like, just do the best you can. There's no point in getting shitty about it. I think, um, you know, people who say are the product that they're selling, people doing their own sales, especially if they're a coach or something like that, is I think that I can certainly appreciate it could be quite painful, that point of rejection, when like you have put in everything, like when you like, this is all I got, man. And I'm, I'm offering everything and I'm, I'm putting in the work and people are like, no, I'm not doing it. Um, that is in that instance, like you're not, you, you, it could be many reasons. You're not right for them. They don't have the money. Like there could be lots of things, but I can totally see how a lot of people then get that. Like, you know, um, it's, you know, it crushes them. Yeah. But if you then go to lash it's out. Not, it's not getting married. Yeah, but this is the thing. You so know? this is what this is what I see, and I see it in every industry because I see, yeah, you know, on Facebook, I've got however many thousand friends I have that work mm. at all different things, <laughs> right? But like they all, they like you see it from time to time. People will do the like this person has wronged me post exactly like <laughs> yes. you say, especially with the screenshot. It's crazy, man. Yeah, in, in the in the dog space, I I've I've messaged a few people, and as soon as you see someone put like a screenshot of an email. And like, how dare they ask this ridiculous thing on their personal page about something in their business? 
if they're a friend, I've in every instance reached out to that person and been like, you might want to take a little break. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because that, that level of rejection upsetting you to that point yeah. that you then complain about that person publicly. And you know when they do the screenshot and it's like, I've, I've covered their name <laughs> like with no. the highlighter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, but it's, it's, like if I like, do this, would I you this go down to? Would you go to Times Square? Yeah. Stand on a soapbox with those printed out and scream. Yeah. yeah. Because that's what you're doing. Yeah. And so, like, I just don't get it. I, I yeah. just like I've had my fair share of accounts say no to us. I've had a big accounts quit. At no stage did I ever take it as a personal affront to me. Mm-hmm. It's like that's business. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, it's business. Like, if you get fired, it's not personal. I know people say it is, but it's not. Like, yes, it affects you personally, but it is not personal. Yeah. Like, businesses are run to provide something at a profit, um, and, and that's how it rolls. Like, yeah. it's... So, you know, like, I've had it happen twice where people have, like, screenshotted me or mentioned me in, like, super negative ways and all that kind of stuff. Like, I just don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Because yeah. they're not talking about me. They're talking about... Matt Ryder, and that is not me. Yeah, yeah. Like, they're talking about the perception that they feel. On one instance, it was all people which I'd fired, and I went, you know what? I get it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? You want to rant about me because I fired you? Hey, man, if that makes you feel better, that's fine, because it doesn't make me feel bad. Yeah. I don't care. I have friends. I have family. I don't need more of them. Like, yeah. I treat everyone as good as I possibly can, and most of the time I treat people better than they treat me. So, like, I'm fine with me. I think um, on a much more personal level, I think that's a superpower of yours, though. Like, I think that you have a capacity to not give a fuck about that sort of stuff beyond what most people do. Like, I think that, like, I like to think that I'm pretty good at that, but I can't hold a candle to you in that space. (laughs) My lack of give a fuck? Yeah, about, like, that sort of situation. Because, like, for me, I would not let that derail me. I would, but I would still be like, hey, fuck, man, I did my best by you. You know, like, I still, like, that affects me. Not enough to cause a big issue, yeah. but it still affects me. But the way it's, you don't, it's you don't give shit. It's for my dad, man. My dad, I'll never forget, I was fucking road raging because a guy cut me off. And he goes, why are you angry? And I go, a guy cut me off. He goes, do you think he cut you off? And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, bro, they just cut the car off. You just happened to be in it. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, uh. <laughs> yeah, and it's like so. But then that I, I get. I'm on board with that. Yeah. I would never get angry in the car. Yeah. But well, I get angry in the car all the time still, but <laughs> just because of people, I think people are mouth breathers. That thing that makes me angry most in the world is window liquors and mouth breathers. Yeah, just fucking <sighs> just people making your sandwich. You're like, fuck, bro. Just like <laughs> hurry the fuck up, man. Like it shits me. I really struggle with that. But um, I, I can only imagine like what Elon Musk must feel on a daily basis. Yeah, like he must have a superpower where he can let that go because we're all mouth breathing chimps to that guy. Yeah. You know? And like, I consider myself intelligent, but not a super intelligent person, but compared to like some of those fucking skin farmers walking around, it's like, what are you doing? Yeah. You know, I don't know how they survive, but you know, Elon Musk must be like, look at these all fucking morons. Yeah. Like just run around like amoebas. Oh, damn um, Elon. But, but for me, like, I, I feel like I, I do a good job of rationalizing the behavior. Mm-hmm. And I, I just think I go, like I get, like when that Bill guy just fucking rants it, I was like, oh yeah, like I can, I get that. You know, like, I don't agree with it, but I, 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 like, first of all, probably most of what he said he doesn't even believe, but it's really good for marketing. Mm-hmm. So I was like, so there's a marketing aspect. Second of all, he was fired, so he felt like he was probably done wrong by. He has an ego, which is fine. Maybe not an enormous ego, but an ego. And I was like, oh, yeah, you put all those things together and that outcome, like, and the catalyst was not his mm-hmm. doing. The catalyst was our doing, right? And it was actually my doing because I approved the post. Mm-hmm. Right? And so I'm like, I started that series of events. Mm -hmm. And I was like, that's the natural outcome. Had I have thought about it, I would have realized that was going to be a natural outcome. But at the end of the day, like, I don't give a fuck. Because news cycles are quick. Um, You know what I mean? And then that caused a bunch of people. And I read the comments, I was like, that's just hilarious. Yeah, I remember seeing the desk (laughs) reading the comments. But that was when I was like, I was looking at you, because I was reading them, and imagining, you know, I've had people come after me, right? Yeah. Like, and... A lot of them are the same. I like look at it through the lens of like, you know, a lot of these people are probably not well, you yeah. know? Um, yeah. And I, you know, I don't want to throw any fuel on that fire of yeah, your yeah. mental illness, right? So you'd be, that's cool. Yeah. 
and I, but it takes some thinking. Like I have to talk myself into that. Yeah, right? Right. Like that's not my initial. It's a high road and I should take yeah, it. Yeah, like <laughs> my initial is like, like, what? Uh, <laughs> 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 to pull out this dagger. Don't they know? Don't let me bleed out, right? Like, don't they know my pure intentions? Yeah, yeah. And then I can like, oh, okay, fuck, yeah, right. And and, like, I can get back to it. But I was watching you read those comments, like, "Ah!" (laughs) (laughs) like you're enjoying it as much as they were. Yeah. And I was like, this is, this is something else. Marco called me freaking out. I was like, bro, who gives a fuck? Um, And and, and how I got Marco talking off the cliff, got to do this. And I was like, would Cardone care? And he was like, oh. and I was like, or oh, would he hop on a plane that he owns and fuck a supermodel? Yeah. <laughs> it's like living well is the best revenge. Yeah, the yeah. second time was when, when that uh, Taki Moore guy called me out in his group for a setter that I didn't even know was happening, trying to p- pinch people out of his group. Yeah, so explain that probably, because you, you've mentioned it a couple of times, but never explained yeah. it on the podcast. So there was, a, it actually, I was really grateful that it happened. Sounds stupid, but it actually flagged a really significant issue. Um, was that there were setters in my profile, and they just went rogue and they started doing outreach, which was never the plan for my profile. My profile was take inbound, don't do any outbound. Mm-hmm. But like the, the guy who was sort of running the profile, who was gonna be he's doing some of the sales, wanted more leads. So they went into groups and just did it the wrong way. Mm-hmm. Like if you're gonna go into a group and try and get people into your profile, then you talk to them about a post and then just ask them questions and you long play it. Mm-hmm. But they went like, oh, hey, I saw you in this and this and this. Are you, you know, and it was super transparent. Yeah. So anyway, like it wasn't me, like, but I'm, you know, I take responsibility. But it's your profile. It's my profile. It was someone you employed, and but they weren't doing it with your um, knowledge. Yeah, knowledge, not even permission. They were, and they weren't doing it maliciously against you. No, they were just trying to hustle. Yeah, they were. Yeah. Just didn't know the. They just didn't know the the land. And so, like, uh, Taki messaged me. It was like, oh, hey, man, this, this, and this. I got to kick you out of the group. I was like, oh, yeah, hey, dude, yeah, I get it. Do your thing. Um, that was my response. Like, oh, hey, man, sorry, dude, was a setter. I actually didn't know what was happening, but hey, dude, do your thing, whatever you got to do. Yeah. I'm fi- fine by me. Like, I think he was probably surprised at the thing. I was like, just so you know, I've told him to shut it down. But he, um, like, name and shame me in the group, right? Yeah, yeah. I was like, okay. <laughs> everything is content. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, yeah, okay, you do what you want. Um, I'm sure some people will come to my defense and I'm sure some people will, will not, you know, yeah. and, and it kind of is the way it is. Um, but that, like, the only thing that I was upset about, like the, the only thing that I was upset about was how bad the messages were. Right. But it kind of opened up a whole new, like, fuck, we need to look into this. Because if those are the guys on my profile, surely they're the good ones. Mm-hmm. And then I found out they weren't the good ones. They were just sticking the shit ones on my account. And I was like, well, that's fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, but like, you know, some of the messaging through a lot of the accounts was just off. And so it gave us a chance to fix a fair few things and increase revenue. Um, but, you know, with news cycles the way they are. And that was the first time I think I can genuinely hand on heart say, like, there was a thing that happened and I had no fucks to give. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, no, that's, that doesn't bother me in the slightest. Because I think, like, two or three years ago, I would have been bothered by that. Like, it would have taken me a little bit to kind of justify it and then I would have got over it. But instantaneously, I was like, oh, I don't care. Mm. Um, yeah. And then, like, even, like, at ClickFunnels, like, we had some... Like, I've had... I've told... When contractors have done the wrong thing by us, I've told them. Um, and I've told them very clearly, very professionally, but very clearly that, like, this is a real problem. And people don't know how to take that very well, especially when, like, you're very clear and very honest um, about, like, the experience that you've had with them and how negative it was and the impacts that that's had f- moving forward and how, like, I, I wish to never see, speak, or deal with you ever again. Okay. Um, I won't shitmouth people, though, because, like, I've been asked about those specific people and I always give the same response. And it's, my experience was less than ideal, but it's only one experience. Mm-hmm. Because, like, it's true. Yeah. And I hope that people talk about that because we haven't knocked every account we ever had out of the park. Yeah. We've shit the bed on a few. I could openly admit that. We've killed a bunch, but we've also failed at some. But it's like, that's not a reflection. Yeah. You know? So it's just like, I don't know. My experience was less than optimal. Yeah. You know? Um, but it was at, when we were at ClickFunnels, I saw a few of those people. Yeah. Yeah. I had, and, and they, like, how did that go? Because um, there, I imagine then they're like standoffish, like there's an issue between you and me and you're the opposite. You're like, hey man. no, that there was an issue. Yeah, it's professional though. Like yeah. it's a professional issue. I don't have a personal issue with you. Yeah. You know, like there, there's, there's, there's a different thing. Like if I had a personal issue with you, I would tell you about that and that would be very different. 
Like, I wouldn't want to speak to you, but I was like, oh, hey, how are you, man? How's everything going? How's life? Sweet, dude. Like, everything's fine with me. I yeah. Just, I don't really care. They didn't. I could tell they were very uncomfortable, though. Yeah. Which, you know, is fun, too. Yeah. <laughs> but I think, Mark, on the other hand, he takes things more personally. Yeah, I think that's indicative of um, people sort of their work and their life and not being able to separate any between that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think some people are good at that partitioning. Like, I'm a character at work and this is, I'm playing the character of businessman. Yeah. And then you come home and you're like, I, like I'm the character of dad. Yeah. You know, whereas I think if you're like always, this is, I'm, I'm the hustle, I'm all of this. If you have a business issue, it has to be a personal issue as well. Yeah. Like if you can't distinguish the two between. Yeah. I think that that's what happened to me recently in the States as well. Like there's yeah, other high, high profile people in the industry that I have publicly not, not argued with, but sort of, you know, we have like different ideas on techniques and it's just like on, it's like, like doesn't mean they're a bad person. No, not at all. And no. like, it's not even like, doesn't even mean I don't think their way is cool. It's just not the way I choose. You know what yeah. I mean? And so there's like this expectation that there's going to be an argument or, or even just separate sides of the room. And I was like, no way. I was like, I'm getting drunk. Go and get a photo with you. Just yeah. and put that online just to make sure people see. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Because I think you're actually a super cool dude. Just do things a little bit different. Yeah. That is one of the things that, like, I think I learned from the military of what not to do. Yeah. Because in the military, if you're considered bad at your job, you're the worst person on you're the, the worst. planet and you need to go. You're the worst. You, you have to be like, bullied. Everyone hated you. You have yeah. to be bullied until you leave. Until you leave. <laughs> yeah. Which I get. In that role, I get. Right? <laughs> it's so bad. It's so mean. Um, yeah, it's just, you have to be bullied out. It's the yeah. way it works. But some of those guys stick around. Yeah. But some of them turn around. I mean, I was like, so like with all the original decks, that was the case. Like when we all first got to the unit, it was like, you're all pieces of shit. And we were yeah. pieces of shit. We've been in the army five minutes and we're in fucking special forces. We're like, yeah. what the fuck are we doing here? And we were the first crew of people to do that. Yeah, yeah. But then, you know, first trip comes around, we turn out to do all right and you get good mentoring. And then it turns like people turn around and mm. it's like, oh. We're going to stop bullying you now. Yeah. We're going we're to joke you're, with you about okay. how we used to bully you. <laughs> I mean, you bullied me. I know. I know, yeah. but that's the army. That's the army. There's no choice. First time I ever met you. I was just wearing a jacket with no shirt because we were at a party and that, it made sense in context. <laughs> you just go, hey, this is this guy, this is Booney. He was like, you're not fat. You're just blank. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, who is this motherfucker? Like, oh, that's Pat. But I think the army has that, though. Like, if, if you are bullied and you can play along with it, like, oh, you're in the crew. You yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, you're, you're fine. Yeah, if you don't mind taking it, yeah. it's like, oh, well, that's fine. Yeah. I think that's one of the things that I, uh, you know, I was talking to people recently. I was at a big conference, a lot of army guys there, uh, and talking about uh, the military and it's like self-deprecating humor. And I yeah. think one of the things, like one of the skill sets that I think gets overlooked, maybe it's just that sort of our old, you know, I don't know that it exists across the rest of the defense or Australia the has world. that as well. So it's probably. Yeah, probably Australia, exaggerated. Yeah. But like bad news doesn't get any better with time. And so yeah. when you make a mistake, you, it's better that you tell everyone as fast as you can. Yeah, get ahead and of it. you control the narrative then. Yeah. Right? You can be like, you can turn that story about how you nearly, like, with, do, you, do you ever hear about when I nearly fucking ran over everyone at the demo? No. Do you ever hear that? Because <laughs> <laughs> when they built the SFTF, right? So brand new, what was it worth at the time? Like $180 million training facility, right? And we had to set up the demo because the old tag demo was at the old things. It was very boring. And when the SFTF was first opened, because mostly what the tag does is demos for politicians who want to yeah, know yeah. why we spent $180 million <laughs> on this facility. So we have to show it to them. So we're designing, <laughs> so we're designing the tag demo. Right? Yeah. And with the, the assault demo where the two cars come in into the range, I was the driver of the car on the right side. And we're like laying out the targets and deciding where it's going to go. And I said to, um, he's still in, I won't say his name, to, to the, the, OS, the, the platoon commander, I was like, I, I reckon I can shoot a pistol out the window as I'm doing the power slide in. And he's like, all right. <laughs> Even though normally the windows would be up, but like, sure, why not? Like, that seems cool. See how you go. So we set up this thing and it was never going to be a part of the demo. It was just, we're having fun. 
And so I did it, right? So we, I come in massive power slide and I'm pistol out the window and pull off a one-handed shot and hit the balloon <laughs> as I'm like power sliding yeah. in. The guys get off, I put the holster in, I'm getting out of the car thinking, like I'm actually thinking to myself, you're a hero. I'm the best. There, yeah. There's no one better than me. Brett, eat your heart out. <laughs> I'm the best. Nobody is better at this than me. I'm the goddamn best person at being in the tag that has ever lived. Yeah. And I'm legitimately thinking about that as I watch my car overtake me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> because I'd like done the bow slide with my like actual brake and holstered and in my head, like job complete, get out and follow the assaulters who are already ahead because they jump off the car as it's sliding, right? So as I'm sort of like regaining my gun and I'm coming forward, I watch my car overtake me and I hadn't put it in park and it is headed. And so like all of the snipers are on the side and they're watching this demo as my car is headed yeah. towards them, right? Yeah. So I'm like, fuck, and I turn around with the door shut. So I go running over, dive in through the window, land on the horn. So everybody looks as I'm like pulling the <laughs> And it's like, I nearly ran them over. Nearly <laughs> hit the whole lot of them. Jesus Christ. And so... Yeah, colossal fuck up. Yeah. So I'm like, I need to tell everyone this. Like, so yeah. at the mess, I'm like, everyone gather around. <laughs> <laughs> I did something stupid. Yeah. And I had the opportunity, I realized, I can tell this as a funny story. The same way I just told it there. Yeah, I can yeah. tell this as a funny story. If someone else tells this, it's going to be about the time Pat fucked up massively and nearly killed the whole sniper platoon yeah. by doing something stupid. Or... I can tell the time the story you shot about, that balloon. Yeah, the time that I it shot that balloon and then made a numbers. little mistake that yeah, maybe yeah. nearly killed everybody. Yeah. So I feel like that's one of the things. Like that's a, and I've never really seen much of that anywhere else, yeah. where people are like, "I can get ahead of this." I dropped a nod. Um, yeah, on Talisman Saber when I was in three R E R. Right, and I remember, I remember like I was quite like uh, paranoid about doing it. So I remember like it couldn't have been more than three or four minutes. Right? And I remember it stopped and I went to my seco at the time and I was like, dude, I dropped a nod. He's like, oh, fuck. And I was like, I think we just got to call it now. He's like, no, 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 we'll get to the next. I was like, no, 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 dude, trust me. We got to call it now. And he's like, no. And I was like, I dropped a nod. <laughs> I was like, I was just yelled it out. I dropped a nod. And the boss was like, fuck. And it was like, Emu Bob back literally a minute and we found it. Yeah. And I was like, man, if we went another 30 yeah, yeah. minutes, that would have been like, X over. Yeah, yeah. Like huge disaster. Yeah, huge disaster. Well, that's how one of the waterers dropped one out of the out of Black Hawk over the dam. Yeah. Just fell straight up and he just that's like gone. fuck. Yeah, that's gone. We never found it. No, of course. It doesn't matter now. Afghanistan they have all of them. Taliban has better nods than we ever did. Yeah, yeah. They got the good stuff. Yeah. So yeah, I think getting out ahead of it is good, but anyway. That's rejection. That's rejection. <laughs> if you um, wanna be rejected less there's a link down below to a program called The Closing Code. 50 bucks a week, and uh, we teach you all things sales, um, how to like plan out your day, and kind of how to optimize yourself to, to be able to more, be, be, more, be more productive in a sales environment. Yeah, I guess that is kind of where the point of this was going, is if you struggle with rejection, just get really good. Yeah, it's like <laughs> just, I just don't. I just, just don't be shit. No, I just don't get no's. Yeah, if you close everyone, it's not an issue. You can work less too. Yeah. Yeah, you can just make like three calls a day, close them all, make a ton of money and go home. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Done deal. Easy. All right. Hey, that's it. Another episode of Coffee's Close. If you like this stuff, like, rate, share, do all of that. Give us some comments. Let us know what you want to see more of. Uh, see if we should do it at this house more often or whether we should use the studio. <laughs> um, let us know what you like. Let us know what you don't. And we'll, uh, we'll still do whatever we want to do anyway. Bye. Put that coffee down. 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 comfortable place to do it. Yeah. Ooh, you better leave in that simultaneous get up. That was amazing.